Way back when I first started my channel, I got my start doing black box log analysis. Looking at black box logs that tell you what the PIDs and inside the flight controller are doing, and then studying that to try to make the quads fly better. And since then, PID controllers have gotten a whole lot better, and I have gotten a whole lot less interested in the details of black box log analysis, and I just tune by gut feel. In fact, if you want, me, if you want to watch me tune this exact quad, I've got a link to the video where I did it, and you, I'll put that in the video description. You can check it out when I'm done here. But wait, don't go, because which is better? Tuning a quad just by gut feel and going, ah, it's, it's pretty good, let's just go fly it, send it! Or digging into the black box log and doing things to objectively make the quad fly better. It seems like the answer to that would be obvious. And that's what we're gonna find out today. This quad right here, the one that I'm holding, sorry for the shaky cam, this quad was tuned by Mark Spatz, Mr. UAV Tech. Now I'm gonna do a flight first on Mark's PIDs and just give you my impressions of how it flies. Then I'm gonna do a flight on my PIDs and talk about the differences. And then I'm gonna do an interview with Mark where we talk about his tuning process. And he's actually got a detailed video on his channel where he goes into the tuning process in even more depth. But let's get this quad in the air and just see how it flies. Oh, crap. Yeah, I, uh, I better remember that that's there. Uh, rear wheel drive car, not really a gravel driveway, rainy. Let's hope I don't hit my car while I'm flying because I fly that way a lot. Let's see, the kind of things I like to do when I'm feeling out of tune, obviously you can just fly it and see if you notice anything about the feel. Um, it has a good stick feel. I like to compare it to the stick feel on my team. Uh, but off the top of my head, it has a good stick feel. Other things you can do include some prop wash tests. Oh, that was pretty good. No prop wash there. Let's do some sharp turns to see how it handles prop wash. No prop wash there. Really getting into the throttle. No, wow. Okay, Mark, I'm impressed, dude. I'm gonna try to get some prop wash out of it here. Wow, wow, that's impressive. That's pretty impressive. Let's do a big drop here. That's really good. Okay, prop wash is very good. These are 51433 props, or no, sorry, uh, HQ 5043, 5043. So these are not very aggressive props, but still. The prop wash handling is very good. Stick feel is nice. Uh, doesn't feel ultra sharp. I'll be curious what he did with feet forward. Little, little prop wash oscillation there, but there was the tiniest bit of oscillation, but still pretty good. I probably would not see that under normal flight. Let's do a uh, some little snappy rolls. Wow. Not the tiniest of bounces at the end of those flips and rolls if I really try to bring it out. That's just being mean though. I mean, that's pretty good. I'm just gonna fly a little bit. How about a... Uh, really trying to jerk it around. Feels good. Wow, that feels really good. It's pretty freaking good. Let me put my pit tune back on it and uh, see how it compares. And I gotta tell you guys, I kinda wonder if I'm just gonna be like, mm, it feels the same. But whatever it is, I'm just going to tell you the truth. Mm. Feels looser immediately. Feels much looser and less direct. It feels sloppy. I got to tell you, it feels sloppy. We'll have to look at the high def footage to see if like, sometimes in a really sharp feeling freestyle quad, will uh, look, the, the height of footage will look bad because you'll see every little jitter and shudder. 
Let's try some uh, sharp turns to see how the prop wash handling is. It's about the same. I think this, I don't know if it's the props or what, but. Maybe it's the prop. The prop wash handling is pretty good. Maybe we both just tuned it really well. It just definitely has a sloppier feel. I mean, I can get her done, but... I don't know if I'm feeling more aggressive because I'm warmed up by that previous pack or whether this is just the feel that I'm used to, so I feel more confident. Interesting. What about snaps? Yeah, no real bounces. A little, little un instability there, but overall it's pretty good. Huh. Well, I'm going to finish this pack just for fun, but let's go inside and talk with Mark about what he did to get this quad two and what he found that was wrong with mine versus what he did differently. Uh, and and here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Here with uh, Mark Spatz, Mr. UAV Tech, and the guy who put the tune on this. And Mark, I don't know if you have been waiting with bated breath to hear what I thought of your tune, but I'm ready I, to drop it on you. I, I was. I was. I'm, I'm hopefully you liked it. I was like, this I could did. go wrong if he goes back and be like, well, that sucked. <laughs> I, I, I actually really liked it. Um, I, I, did, I thought, here's here's what I thought. I think that I was tuning by the seat of the pants and I moved the quad in a certain direction. And I feel like you moved the quad further in that direction in a good way. Uh -huh. Be and I think you were able to do that because you were actually looking at the black box and you were like, yeah, I could get another 5% out of this. Whereas I was like, yeah, it seems good. Let's just stop here. Yeah. I don't know. It can kind of get to your limits and, and push them a little bit harder. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. I, I think that your tune, and I want to talk to you about what you did, like what you thought about my tune when you first saw it, and then what directions you moved it. I want to let everybody know that we're going to intentionally keep it a little high level. And on your channel, you have a video you're going to put together of the actual PID tuning process every flight, all the black box. So if people really want to get down in the weeds of why you made the changes you did, and not other changes, that's going to be linked in the video description below. But let me ask you, what was your first thought when you flew my two? Go ahead, uh, be honest. <laughs> I, I thought it was pretty good. And uh, when I first flew, and I even think you'll see that on my video in the, uh, if I can recall correctly, I might even set it as I'm flying with the little stick overlay, uh, saying, well, geez, you know, hopefully I can make this better. Um, yeah. I noticed the Sedora. Uh, I think it was this iFlight Sedora, is that correct? Correct, the SL5E. Yeah, yeah. Um, flew really well. Uh, and and I, you know, I, I didn't look at black box. Uh, you know, you have to, of course, fly it the first time. And uh, I was like, wow, this, this flies really crisp and sharp. And then when you pull up the black box, I can see why. Um, it's just the noise profile, basically how much raw vibrations it has was really low. And that is just that's a great start you know if, if, if things are a real mess at, at the beginning with vibrations bad props things like that you're kind of pushing a rope up a hill so i was happy to see that but then that, that does um you know make it a challenge when the when the tune is, is pretty good to start with you know how am i going to make this better so one of the first things i noticed was that the um p to d balance slider was a little higher than i than i typically would would go to for a tune that doesn't mean it's wrong i just think there might be a little bit more performance um you in my experience um you want to have as much p term as you can without having overshoot so every everything with pit tuning is really about like pushing things to the, the uppermost limit of where the terms can be without starting to exude bad behavior can we take a look can you hit the refresh button there real quick so this was my tune. 
Yeah. Okay. And I had just made some very minor tweaks. And can we take a look at your tune, which was profile three, I believe? So this is the first time I'm seeing this. Uh, I intentionally flew the quad without looking at Mark's tune because I didn't want to bias myself. I just wanted to fly it and give my impression. And now that I see what he did with the sliders, I'm I'm simultaneously horrified and impressed. Yeah. Because uh, the sliders are so crazy. I would never do this to a quad. Without, but I guess when you're looking at the black box and you know what you can get away with, but also like it flew really good. So as you can see, the PD balance uh, that you had was 1.1. I could made it a little bit more aggressive and can get away with that um, with not having any overshoots or oscillations. And it's, and it's very difficult to, to see um, when you're looking without black box, when you look at black boxes, obviously it's very easy to see of course if you know what to look for which people can check out my video and i'll show you what you need to look for if you're looking at black box if you're not in the black box this pdd balance it's you go almost have, you can't even really see it you have to almost listen because the bounce back is so fast but if you hear that's that's how you know you can't go any lower if you like hear this yeah. slight flutter or this slight little oscillation in the motors after sharp uh flips rolls or sharp stick inputs then you know you've gone too far this way and you got but your pd gain and your stick response gain are way far off from the defaults yeah. so so at this, one point you crank the pd gain so high right and this is where um we separate the wheat from the thatch as they say that quad is such a good quad with the amount of power it has and the raw noise performance that you can really move this PD gain slider way up. Now, why is that not a default from Betaflight? Because Betaflight is flashed to everything from the world-class racing drones that you see um, that people are flying to, you know, just some real garbage sometimes. So the defaults need to be conservative. So when you have a really good quad, you can move these up pretty good. How far you're able to move your filter sliders up will dictate how far then you can move your P and D gain sliders up. If you have a lot of noise, you're not gonna be able to move your filter sliders way up. And in that case, you probably won't be able to move your P and D gain slider up this much either. The stick response slider is really just how close do you want the quad to track your rates? That's a good way to, to put it. It's, it's, it's almost, I mean, this is a terrible analogy, but it's almost a little bit like hyper smooth for your sticks. It's not actually doing any, I mean, it kind of is doing smoothing, isn't it? If you turn stick response all the way down, it literally is kind of filtering out some of the micro movements of your fingers and not letting them get through to the motors. One of the things that, you know, people should try out as well is if, you know, they're interested in just playing around a little bit and they're using the beta flight rates is to check out the actual rates and then set your stick sensitivity down to 10. That really smooths out. That's a way where you can, you know, crank up the feed forward. So when you're moving the sticks really sharp and in fast moves, like, like Mr. Steele, you know, see and avoid, see and avoid. He needs high feed forward, right? He needs that thing to move right away. Um, in that scenario, you know, you can have your high feed forward, but if you want it to be docile around center stick and not have a lot of imperfections, I think actual rates with a stick sensitivity of 10, and I would set it lower if it went lower, but 10 yeah. is as low as it goes. And, and check it out. See if you like it. Oh, yeah. And I don't know if you have a video, do you have a video about actual rates? I do. I do. Okay. We'll put that in the video description as well if people want to know like what are actual rates and and how to play with them. Um, I I feel like I, I don't want to take too much away from your video where you go in depth into the tune. So I feel like um, I kind of want to wrap up here. Um, I really appreciate you being willing to do this. Uh, you you used to do tunes. You used to like just like as a service paid service. And I think you have moved away from that. You've got somebody else you're referring people to who tunes using the same methodology that you use. And if they want to learn to do it themselves, you've also got a ton of research uh, resources over there, tutorials about how to PID tune, how to look at black box logs. Just, this is honestly the most comprehensive resource for black box and PID tuning information. I think uh, on the internet today. I feel like that's fair to say. You also have a Patreon with some bonus content for patrons. So uh, if people want to really get into it, uh, I felt like giving you a plug for that. 
Yeah, and sure. uh, there's other ways to support you as well. So people should, if you enjoyed this video, you should definitely go check out the uavatech.com and Mark's YouTube channel. Links to all of that in the video description. And at a minimum, if you don't want to do much of the work, there's presets there. At least go try out some of the yes. presets. Yes, yes, thank you. Show the presets. Yes. Show so the presets. I'm, I'm it's great because <laughs> like Betaflight's presets are great for like, Betaflight's defaults are great for like a five inch 6S quad. But what if you have a toothpick? What if you want a, you know, a seven inch? You have presets for all of them. And it's a, it's a really good resource to at least try out. Yeah. So, it, it, you know, it's obviously not the exact same tune you saw here on that quad, but it should get you, like I said, it should get you in a closer ballpark, you know, for the different quad class, especially if it's not a five inch. You know, if it's anything other than a five inch, Betaflight presets are not, or Betaflight's default is not specifically made for it. So check out the awesome. presets. Those should be easy. And then if you do want to go into some more depth on PID tuning, you can just go into that. And there's some videos and mythology, and there's a guide here as well, trying to just compile everything in one location. Awesome. Well, Mark, thank you so much for taking the time to tune my quad and for, uh, for talking to me tonight. Well, thanks for the opportunity to tune your quad and <laughs> talk about this tonight. So appreciate it. And thank you guys for watching. That's going to bring us to the end of the video. Happy flying. What are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or join my Patreon or like just here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.